determines whether you will pursue it or you will leave it alone. What you have lost is a determining factor as to whether you will pursue it or you will not. Sometimes I have a feeling like people don't press into God that much because uh, probably they are not aware of what is there for them uh, that they are supposed to press for or they simply don't have value for their destiny. One of the things I would pray for you for is that you stay away from people who have nothing to do with their lives. They are very dangerous people. Don't date anyone that has nothing to lose because you will lose everything for such people. As a minister of God, don't gather anyone around you that seems not to have value for their lives. Because anyone that has no value for their lives will put a burden on you the rest of your life. You'll have to think for them, you'll have to direct them, you will have to help them and be responsible when you don't help them. And if you help them and they lose the help you give them, you'll become their enemy, they will fight you, they will attack you. So don't help anyone that is not willing to help themselves. Have no time for people that have no value. It is not pride. Your time is so precious that don't waste it around people who are not going anywhere. If someone is going nowhere, they always want people who will help them go with them. And if you're not careful, it will be bad. So, the value that you place on what you have lost dictates your pursuit. You see, if you are a minister of God that has never had a taste of the glory of God, you will never know when you are operating beneath your destiny. I don't know if you've seen these people that everything is just okay for them. They're just all right. It is you that look at them and you can tell this man is not all right. But according to him, he's all right. So I pray that you may taste God so that the day that God is not there, you can tell. Your pursuit is based on the value of what you have lost. If you have no value for what you have lost, you'll never pursue anything. In fact, you'll not even know you have lost anything. Have you ever seen these people that they are not married and you ask him, my brother, are you planning to get married? He say, I don't even know. You ask him, are you alright? He say, I don't know if I'm alright, but I think I'm alright. Stay away from such kind of people. Stay away from people that don't have the urgency to attain a place in God. Stay away from people that have no value for their own destiny. You'll be responsible. Their people don't give appointments. Because there's nothing serious they are looking for. Their intention is just to waste your time. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Let me get my timer so that we can run as quickly as we can. Raise your hands and say, Lord, help me stay away from people that don't have value for themselves. The first statement a man uses when I meet them will always tell me whether they deserve my time or not. And it's not pride. I can just listen to one word from you. And I will hurry you very fast so that you go and continue doing nothing. Because that's what you're used to doing. One time I gave someone an appointment and the person came and the person said, I have really longed to meet you. I said, oh, that's great. He said, and, and I, I don't know because what I want to share with you, I, 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 it needs time. When can you give me an appointment? I told the person, wait there. I'll, I'll give you the appointment. He's still waiting for the appointment until today. And such people will go and say, you are very proud. You are very proud. You have no time for people. Listen, if nothing negative is being said about you, either you have no name or you are very useless. 
If everyone endorses you, oh, that's a good man of God. That's a great, the whole of the town. You are useless. Because when you are a man of value, you create reaction. Because you want to instill value in people. If you are headed somewhere, you will be angry having people around you that seem not to have the emergency you have and the urgency in your heart. Jesus said, work while it is day, for the night comes when no man shall be able to work. And I refuse to let anybody play with the time God has given me for what he wants to do. You have to learn how to turn your back on anyone that is not serious with where they are going. They will take you to the same and serious destination where they are headed. The value of what you have lost determines the agency in your spirit when it comes to pursuing it. The reason the son of Ahab embarked on a recovery mission is because 700 million was at stake. Someone giving you 700 million every now and then, if you lose that, you will go after it. Listen, and listen to me very well. When you have lost nothing, you have no need to pursue anything. I don't like dealing with people that don't do things like their lives depend on it. Don't deal with such people. Till you do things like your life depends on it, you're not ready for where God is taking you. And so, this guy gathers three kings. I want to uh, paraphrase this very fast. So he gathers three kings to help him go and fight. The king of Moab, the king of, uh, 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 of Judah, Jehoshaphat, and himself. So three kings embark on a mission. There are a number of things I'm going to cut off uh, so that I can show you one of the major principles of restoration in life. And so they embark on a journey and they meet challenges along the journey of their pursuit. Because anything worth fighting for has challenges. Let me tell you, an anointing will not come by I tap, I receive, I partake. I connect to that grace. It doesn't come like that. Anything worth having is worth fighting for. It has battles attached to it. God will never give anything that doesn't have a price. Jesus said, which one of you wanting to build does not sit down and count the cost? Jesus said that. Jesus said you'll pay the cost when you want to build. For every level of ministry you, you desire, there is investment that is as good as your blood and your life. Don't think the I tap, I receive, I partake generation is ready for that. There's a price to pay based on what you have seen that is worth pursuing. If you've ever tasted the glory of God, you'll settle for nothing less. If you've ever tasted the presence of God, you'll settle for nothing less. If you've ever tasted the hand of God, you will not want to move without it the rest of your life. This guy tasted 700 million. How do I live without that? If you've ever driven a Rolls Royce, you can't be comfortable in a Toyota Crown. It is looking beautiful. It is looking great. But you'll never be comfortable there. If you are a spiritual escalade, you can't function like a spiritual tuk-tuk and be comfortable. There's a realm. If you are not going anywhere, I'm going somewhere. <laughs> if you are not angry, you know, some people are just happy with success. Oh, man of God, the Lord, listen, the lifting of God is not told by material things. If you are comfortable, I'm not comfortable. There's something that is about to hit my life and I'm getting ready for it. I don't know about you. The man couldn't settle without, if you've ever dated a good man, you can't date a rascal and be comfortable. The worst thing that can ever happen to you is to date a good man, then he leaves you without marrying you, then you'll be looking for who to date. I can tell you, you will go around in this life, you'll go back for him. Because once you've tasted something, you can't live without it. I pray if you have the grace to change men and women, you'd rather begin with the bad ones. But the worst part of it is, unfortunately, you may begin with someone that is good. 
There are people you date and if they walk out of your life, your life will be complicated. Not that there will be no men, not that there will be no women. You will meet men, you will meet women, but somewhere at the back of your mind, say, <laughs> it is worse still if a broken relationship led you into marriage and you married someone you less loved and the one that you wanted to prove to that when you walk out I can get married is the one you really loved. It is bad when you are married and your eyes are out through the window. It is dangerous when you are married to Leah and you are watching Rachel through the window. When I don't know if you'll get what I'm sharing tonight. Put it there. It is impossible for those that have been enlightened and have tasted the good word of God and have tasted the powers of the world to come. When they fall, I'm talking to you about restoration. It is bad to be anointed. Because once you have tasted the anointing, if you choose to function without it because of laziness, you'll always know. And it will pain you. And God will not anoint any man freely like that because you have desired. Every time you are restless in your spirit and you feel like there's a dimension, God begins to kill the flesh. You will pray. The only thing that tells God you are ready for the next level is your level of sacrifice. Not mourning. The scripture says in the book of Psalms, by the rivers of Babylon we sat down and wept when we remembered Zion. There are many people now that are only remembering Zion and they are weeping. I came to tell you if there is anything good you have ever tasted. Have you ever tasted money? The trouble is some of you may not have aggression because you've never tasted it. It is bad when you have lived in Runda to go back and live in Mlango Kubwa. You understand what I'm saying? Do you get what I'm saying? Nothing is wrong with Mlango Kubwa. And if you get a good flat there and move in there, it is the best as per that time where God has put you. But what I'm saying is this, may you not ascend to a higher place than come down. And if anyone is listening to me that was once up in a certain dimension in your operations with God, I have come to call you back to restoration. God needs you back in the place that he ordained for you. God needs you back in the realm and in the dimension that he ordained for you. Look at this. Look at this. For it is impossible for those who are once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift. My brother, once you taste heaven, you can't operate on this earth without it. And have tasted the heavenly gift. And have become partakers of the Holy Spirit. And have tasted the good word of God. I love that word. And the powers of the age to come. The age to come. We can taste it now. I always say this. If you never go to heaven while you are still alive. Chances are when you die you are not going there. Because heaven is not a place where we go and we die. We have tasted the powers of the age to come. You know what? The scripture says, you can even put it there, he has put eternity in the heart of a man. Man is mobile eternity. When a man is walking with God, he's not headed for eternity. He's an eternal being. I pray for you. Don't get excited by a Range Rover. Don't get excited by a mansion. Don't get excited by jewelry, designer watches. Those are useless things. The thing is, where is your anointometer pointing? Because as a minister of God that works with God, you must be able to read the, your anointometer. That's my own word I've introduced to it. In other words, your level of anointing. Are there things you dominated that are once that are now creeping back into your life and you are tolerating them? Are there realms and dimensions that you overcame long time ago that you are now struggling with again? Listen, my agenda is not to trend. You can trend and you are lost. You don't need the Holy Spirit to trend. 
<laughs> my agenda is not to make you popular. My agenda is to have the hand of God rest upon your life. Because that is what you need. Which Facebook marketed David? Which Twitter handle marketed David? Hey, man of God, it is impossible in this generation. Who told you? Is it in the Bible? The hand of God remains the greatest marketing scheme of a man's destiny. Whatever you attain by marketing that you didn't attain on your knees will mark you for destruction. Don't build naturally a capacity you don't have spiritually to sustain. It is dangerous when a good voice puts you where your spiritual life has not reached. Dangerous. When your schemes and tactics put together 50,000 people and in the spirit realm you don't have the capacity to even carry your own life. You become a performer and an entertainer that must do things to remain trending and relevant. But Baba, you need the hand of God over your life. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I was born again in the old school. I don't know some of these things you people believe in. I believe in an encounters with God. I believe in the presence of God. I believe in the anointing of God. I still believe that God can do it. Listen. God, look at it, has made everything beautiful in its time. Also, he has put eternity in our hearts. He has put, not he will. Eternity is not coming. Eternity is here. He has put eternity in our hearts. Did you see that? Turn your head and read it. One, two, three, go. Not that he will. Listen, listen. Stop these things of God will. Stop changing God's word. God has already made everything beautiful. So if something is ugly in your life, ask why. He has made, not he will make. The plan of God concerning your life is a foregone conclusion. God is not dealing with any demon so that you can rise. God has already raised you. The bit that has not happened is your part. Rise up and meet God where God has placed you. Stop meddling up in the mud when God has set you apart for royalty and greatness. He has made everything beautiful. It is you to play your part so that what he has done can line up with your life. Somebody shout restoration. Then God is not planning to put eternity in the hearts of men. God has already put eternity in the heart of a man. We are moving eternal beings. When you are born again, you are a mobile altar. Eternity is with you. That's why we call men to Christ and they get saved and they change. Because we are transporting eternity. Eternal life is in us. Not will come. The unstoppable life of God is flowing through our beings. So now they embark on a journey of recovery. When 700 million is at stake, you'll fight. It is hard to live with seven without 700 million once you are used to having it regularly. Some are praying, Lord, if you give me one million, I will worship you the rest of my life. A man lost 700. Now listen. So, they decide to go and see a man of God. Because they have tried everything they can. And seven days they are in the wilderness. They are going around. And around and around, they don't have water. Things are dry in their lives. And they decide that, man, you know what? Now, let's go and see a prophet of God. Please touch that keyboard for me. Let's go and see a prophet of God. Let's go and see a man of God. Uh, and of course, they weren't even aware that the man of God existed until Jehoshaphat asked and said, is there no prophet here that we may consult of him, that we may go to him and inquire from God? I love that word that no matter what you lose in this life, no matter the strategy you think you can use to bring it back, if God is not part of your life, you're just playing games. Listen. Any conference they are calling you to, to teach you how to get anything outside God is just deception. 
So they go to the man of God. And when the man of God sees them, I'm paraphrasing very quickly, and the man of God seems not to like the king of Israel because of the idolatries of the mother. And he tells him on the face, go to the gods of your father and the gods of your mother. But then he looks around and he sees Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah. And he says, I have seen a man that has a relationship with God. On the grounds of this man, I will give a listening ear. Then Elisha, the man of God, says, okay, you guys have come to me. But the most important thing you can ever get from me is not that you have come. The most important thing you can ever get from me is the God that I serve. Listen. As you seek to serve God under me and under my guidance and under my leadership, there is one thing I want you to get serious with and that is God. God is given to men by men. Men are pointed to God by their fellow men. Men are challenged to love God by their fellow men. So listen, so Elisha, oh, mercy, kadaba. Raise your hands and say, Lord, Lord, let your hand be upon my life. I need restoration in my life, but Lord, I cannot do it without your hand upon my life. Let your hand be upon my life. Till God is your pursuit, you have not begun pursuing anything. Till you have settled for God, you have not settled at all. Till you have made God the final decision, you have not taken a decision at all. Till God has become your pursuit in life, you have not started your journey. So Elisha says, well, I am angry, I am not feeling all right in my spirit. But I want to work on my attitude so that we can see God. I love that. So that we can see God at work. You came, let me show you God. Ministers of God that are here, Kizungu kuna watu wanaweza ongea kizungu. If kizungu or saving people will have good turn-ups in terms of salvation. But there is a difference between oratory skills and revelatory skills. They are not the same. Today the ministry is almost becoming a lecture hall. If you become a lecturer to them, get ready to do the things that lecturers do in ministry. I want to pray that no matter the gift that God has given you, may there be the resting of heavenly dew on your life. I want to pray that whether it is business, you may not be in ministry, whichever capacity you are serving God in, may the dew of heaven set you apart and distinguish you. Whichever capacity you find yourself, whether you are a teacher, whether you are a high school teacher, whether you are a lecturer, whoever you are, and you say you are born again, may the distinguishing hand of God be upon your life. So Elisha tell them, tells them, well, bring me a musician. Second Kings chapter 3, verse number 15. He said, well, I am angry. I wasn't, I, I wasn't happy to see. Please, lower that thing. I wasn't happy to see the king of Israel. But now bring me a musician. Look at it, verse number 15. Now bring me a musician. Other versions talk about a minstrel. Look at the original thy and thou version. What does it say? But now bring me... But now bring me a minstrel. Someone should get the meaning of a minstrel very quickly. Get me a minstrel. Somebody say a minstrel. I don't like the way you are saying it. Say it again, a minstrel. Now listen to this. Let me get it for you. I'll be faster than all of you. <laughs> now get me a minstrel. Hmm. Now, my own definition of a minstrel in biblical times, they were not entertainers. There are people that were given the divine capacity by God to host God. There's a difference between an entertainer and one that hosts God. These were people 
that were not just ordinary singers. David had them. They were not just ordinary singers. These guys hosted the presence of God using their vocal cords and their musical instruments. Are you writing that one down? By their vocal cords and, and their musical instruments, they hosted the presence of God. God landed on their strings. When they played it, God came. The scripture talking about Israel, when they were crossing over to Jericho, the Bible says, and when the feet of the priest that bore the ark of the covenant touched the water, the Jordan parted. Why? Not because of the men, but because of what the men carried. They carried the ark of God. Put it there. It's in the book of Joshua. And when the feet of the priests that were bearing the ark of the covenant touched the Jordan, the Jordan gave way because the presence of God was on their lives. Oh boy. This should get you angry. In such an advanced generation, it is an insult for you to be begging for followership. Because what follows you, what you carry, determines what follows you. Men are spirits. They don't just follow people. The world has done some things to command a following. There are things you need to do that the invisible world may attract to you what men cannot attract in the arm of the flesh. If you miss it in this generation, Paul will judge you. Paul never had the privileges you have. Now look at this. You able to see it? Look at it. That's Joshua chapter. It is there. Just turn your neck and look at it. It's there. Don't search what has been found. Joshua chapter. Chapter 3 verse 13. Now read it. What does it say? It shall come to pass. Somebody shout the ark of the Lord. Who bear the ark of the Lord? The Lord of all the earth. When their feet will rest on the Jordan water. Shall be cut off. Read some further. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Continue to read. So it was when the people set out of their camps to cross over the Jordan. When the priests that were bearing the ark of the covenant of the Lord before the people. Please read. As those that carried the ark came to the Jordan, dipped in the edge of the water, because the Jordan overflows at all its banks during the time of harvest. Continue. Hmm. 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 Mm. 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 and were cut off when their feet touched the water because they carried the presence of God the water gave way how do you carry it and beg put it there O oh, rams O oh, mountains what made you flee? What made you flee? That is in the book of Psalms. Oh, mountains. What made you run? A man was talking to the mountains. When the people of, when, 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 when Jacob uh, was coming, the Bible says, the water saw them and the water ran away. Mountains saw them and mountains skipped like rams. And a man began to talk to mountains. Oh, mountains, I know how solid you are. What did you see that you jumped up like rams? Sha 
Shakabari. Somebody shout the presence of God. Oh, I don't like the way you are shouting it. Shout it the presence of God. I pray that my presence in your life will not be to excite you, will not be to give you stories, will not be to pamper you, will be to push you at the place that you will be soaked in the presence and in the power of God. Raise your hands and shout, let your hand, oh God, be upon my life. We are not quarreling. I'm inspiring you. I'm trying to get you out of this nonsense that has kept you where you are. There's a version of God's grace you need and nonsense will bow down. There's a version that rests on your life and you keep telling your story everywhere. Man of God, let me give you my story. Let's go to verse 1. Shabadaga. Shout the presence of God. Shout again the presence of God on my business. Shout the presence of God on my life as a single lady. Shout the presence of God on whatever I touch. The presence of God. Let's read this. Then I come here. I only have a few minutes to finish. When Israel went out of Egypt, the house of Jacob, from a people of strange language, Judah became his sanctuary and Israel his dominion. The sea saw it and fled. Jordan turn its back. <laughs> Ma, bahari iliwaangalia hivi. Bahari katoroka. Wewe bado unakuja ku report muganga kwa pasta. Pasta, acha nikuambie, wale ni kula usiku mzima. Hii ni nini umebeba hii? And the Bible says what we are carrying is better than what they carried. We are under a better covenant. We are more superior to these guys. Baruna tapika asubuhi. Shetani ashidwe. Na inaribu interview. Ask your neighbor what are you carrying? <laughs> what are you carrying on your life? Look at this. The mountains skip like rams. The little hills like lambs. Israel was coming coming from a land of bondage redeemed by the hand of God look at this so the man was asking the mountains questions what else you owe see that you fled oh Jordan that you turned back look at verse 6 oh mountains that you skip like rams oh little hills like lambs 7 tremble O oh earth and this is the answer at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob. You know, your, your trouble is that's your problem. Full of points without God. You are full of head knowledge. You don't have a heart experience. And when you are full of head knowledge, it will betray you in this generation. There's a place in God you need. I keep calling you to six hours of prayer and you are daily telling like it is going to help the pastor. There's a place in God you need. Who turned the rock into a pool of water. The flint into a fountain of waters. Now unto us, O Lord, not unto us, but your name give glory because of your mercy, because of your truth. The reason the rams were running is because the reason the mountains were skipping. Oh God, let the glory not come to us. The mountains show you. Oh Lord, do not I shah igaba. Oh Lord, the reason millions came like a joke, it was not unto us. All the glory to you. Because when money saw us, money ran towards us because of what we carried, because of the presence of God. Men will ask money, money, what did you see that you followed that man like that? People will ask marriage, marriage, what did you see that you honored that man like that? And the man will say, to you be glory, not unto us. Because let the earth tremble at the presence of God. Beba mungu, beba mungu. Watch us 75 steps and 86 steps on how to get a wife. It doesn't exist. The single girls, Tonight I'm going to give you seven steps on how to win a man. There's only one step. Be anointed. 
be anointed. Carry God. Pastor, how can I command crowds? How can I get into a city? And people, you know this is why pastors are going, 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 listen, you are going for what God already gave you ten times. Unaenda mahali uziku, upate power. When the Bible says we are already buried with Christ. We are not ordinary men. We are eating human flesh and drinking human blood in communion. You are still going to look for the bone of a pig to put in your pocket. To speak to members. Looking for a, an inferior version of the original thing that God already gave you. We are buried. One time I went to pray in a deadly place for three days. I came back and my mother asked me, where were you? I told her, hey, you came back alive. I said, yes. Then something came out of my mouth. I told my mother, dead men don't die. Dead men don't die. You can't be at the same level with this generation and, 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 and affect them. Mountains rain. They skipped. They saw the presence of God. And they said, oh Lord, not unto us. The mountains saw you. Carrying God that mountains see you and mountains begin to jump. I pray that whatever it is that has defied your life, may the presence of God, may the presence of God meet with it. I pray that whatever it is you have been looking for and looking for, you don't need to look for it. Jesus one time said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Things are not the issue. The issue is what you have been seeking. That's the issue. How can I get a crowd? Then Jesus arose way early while others were sleeping and went out into a deserted place. And there he prayed. I want to see you that, show you the results. He showed us how to do ministry. He woke up while men were sleeping. Jesus, Jesus gave the formula. All these conferences of the 72 points that will blossom your ministry. I've seen people read them and die frustrated. How to have a big church. Where can you poster? Man of God, I wanted to be part of it. I must have a big church. Why do you want a big church? What for? What is this that is pushing you into a big church? Those who look for it never find it. It is not looked for. That man of God, I want a crowd. That nikiangalia hivi, nasikia fura kwa moyo. You are dead before you start. Now in the morning, let's look at it. I'm about to close. I'm sorry to speak like this, but I feel for you. I feel for you. Kuna kamote ya makamote. Kuna hirizi ya mahirizi. Kuna formula of formulas. Now in the morning, having risen a long while before daylight, he went out to, and departed he went out and departed to a solitary place and there he did what? Jesus did what there? There! He prayed. If you pray alone, he will give you men to listen to you. If you can convince him that you need him, he knows what you need. But you keep telling God indirectly that what you are interested in is what he can give you. That's what you've been telling him. Can you come to a place of sincerity with God and prove to God you're not looking for anything, you're looking for him? Look at this. Now, 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 now. There he prayed, verse number 36, if I'm not wrong. And Simon and those who are with him searched for him. Every pastor wants to be searched for. That is the man of God that every man wants to meet right now. Everybody wants to be searched for. Every young girl wants men to say, Shh, can I talk to you? Every young girl wants to brag by the number of inboxes that are after her. For you to be on Facebook. And since you joined Facebook in 22 or 3, until today, not even a, an, an inbox by mistake asking for your name has come. Listen, people look for, now I didn't say if you have so many inboxes you have the presence of God. No. 
Sometimes it's the weird ancestral demon that was on your grandmother. He doesn't mean you are fine. Why should 100 men be on your inbox looking for you? Are you okay? What is this? Okay, we put that aside. And Simon and those who are with him searched for him. This world is searching for men of prayer. If you don't have what can be searched for, you'll be very frustrated. And when they found him, because when you pray till your generation finds you, some of you are trying to serve yourself raw. You're trying to serve yourself on a plate and no one is willing to eat what you're serving because it is undercooked. Ujapikwa ya kutosha. You see a town like this, ukipikwa vizuri, utatafutwa. There are things you are looking for that God wants to look for you. There are people you are looking for, you are not supposed to look for them, that God wants to look for you. There are things you are pursuing. They are not pursued the way you are doing it. Pastors are killing each other over members. Pastors don't talk to each other. He took my members. The highest level of lack of knowledge of God. He took my members. I can't greet him. He says, he says, he says, Mungu lazima tamua. Ah, ah, man of God. Are you alright? Are you fine? What is this? When God releases a town to you, you will look for where to run. When they found him, because when you find God, men find you. The reason you have been hidden is because God is trying to help your embarrassment. You have nothing here to offer to a generation. That's why you are all over Facebook. Please like my page. Please munifuate. Because there is not, God is trying to help you. There are things he doesn't want you to handle at this cheap level where you are. There are dimensions God is preparing you for. In your busy, you want to go out. Because when you pray enough, they will find you. They'll find you. Nations find men. Wealth finds men. Grace finds men. Their breakthroughs men don't look for, they find men. When you find God, there are things that will find you. When you stay long enough with God, the things men travel to America to go and lie for will speak the truth while looking for you. This city is rich. There is no rich city like this city. This city is rich. You don't need to travel. You need to go deep in God. There is a dimension you will hit. And God will release men to look for you. It is dangerous to go on television to beg men to follow nothing. Then after they come and they hear you, they are more disappointed than they were. Before they came. Because you are undercooked. I came to ask God to cook you. You watching online. This is not an amen message. People are looking for amen. Shares views. If a nobody shares your video. It's just a nobody sharing your video. A hundred amens will not make you better. If you are not deep enough with God. <laughs> The things you looked for will look for you. Look at this. When they found him, I pray that you be found. Ministries are found. Don't think because there's a signboard by the road, this town is aware that this ministry is here. Ministries are found. A man can live next to your house and it will take him 10 years to find you. He has been looking for you. There are people looking for you that are close to you, but they can't find you because you have not found God. There's a covering and a veil on you that breaks when you find God. As you go deep in God, an experience with God is what we call generational discovery. 
People don't just wake up one morning and they are flocking into a place. Something has opened up in the spirit. The man has been found. It is good to have a gift. But there are many gifts that are not found. You can kill a lion, the gift has not been found. You can kill a bear, the gift has not yet been found. You can be wise, the gift has not yet been found. You can compose songs, the gift has not yet been found. Till God sent a prophet. And the prophet came with the oil and touched the guy with the oil. And when he went back, the oil announced him in the palace. And the oil created trouble so that he can be found. I came to say, may something land on you tonight that will make you discover. Raise your hands and say, Lord, forgive me for trying to market nothing. Ladies and gentlemen, if you settle for God, you'll stop your marketing for a while. I had a great man of God say, we are not in the city. We are kilometers away from the city. And God told me, don't put a signboard. As you have traveled, there's no signboard. The church parks by 3 a.m. He said, God told me, don't put a signboard. Just stay with me. I know where you are. I will bring my people to drink. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He causes me to lie down in green pastures. Isn't it? Listen. Till God makes you a pastor, you can't be a pastor. Everyone has run into it, think it's a business. When they see what pastors wear, what pastors dress, how pastors dress, people, I, I'm starting, I'm starting, I'm starting something. I'm starting, my brother, support me, I'm starting. I'm, I'm starting something. My, my, my bro, and then they get in, they are frustrated. Ministry is not porn. Ministry is a divine mandate. Look at this. When they found him, I won't go into what I prepared tonight. When they found him, I pray that you will be found. Someone is looking for you, but your depth cannot allow them to meet you. Millions have been dispatched, but your shallowness cannot allow your helpers to find you. Your prayerlessness has stopped so many people that God wanted to find you. And God is saying, find me. Find me. Don't console yourself you are born again. He couldn't have said seek and you shall find. God is saying, find me. You have done everything for deals. Nothing is working. You are frustrated every Sunday. You go home unhappy. Because you are trying to use your intellect to catch what only God can catch. When they found him, they were looking for him. They found him. Look at this. They say to him, everyone is looking for you. But he said to them, let us go to the next town. Forget those who are looking for me. When God, I've seen men that God has truly anointed. When they get to a prayer line, they, they don't have time to take testimonies. You can't count the testimonies. And they don't even look back. They are gone. Digging a testimony too deep is another kind of desperation. Trying to make God look powerful. Enough to convince the people. <laughs> May God help us. They told him everyone is looking for you. He said, let us go into the other towns that I may preach there also. Because for this purpose, I have come forth. Forget those who are looking for me. They don't understand purpose. The reason I was praying is because I'm a man of purpose. I wasn't raising money for sound equipment. I was praying. They are looking for me. Everyone, forget them. It's not a big deal. Let's go to the next town. Call a pastor and tell him, man of God, I have one million for you. Even if he's in Tanzania in a funeral, he will fly back tonight. Say one million. I'm, I'm, if there's no flight, I'm taking a bus. 
shows how empty you are when money can put you in such kind of an emergency. Someone calls and says, Pastor, I have 100,000. You ask him, where are you? He said, I'm in Naivasha. He said, just stop there. You forget there's curfew. You hit the road. When I'm done with you, you'll die to things. And what you are dead to God will give you. Let's finish with this. And they returned in the power of the Holy Spirit. And news about him. I've said that before. And news about him. When men return from the place of prayer, they create news. And prayerless men also create news. News of poverty, news of lack, news of stagnation. Nimeona mashetani kitolewa kwa wachungaji. A demon of poverty. Go! Man of God, now you are free. Go and minister to people. If that is you, <laughs> if that is you, Mungu nifundishe kuja maza. If that is you, and it is true. I've seen this. You've seen it. I prayed for a pastor here. How many of you are here when I was praying for a pastor here? I cut a pick all over the place here. Mashetani kinda. The man that demons left and the man that you see today are not the same people. And the guy was preaching and people are getting saved in crusades. But he needed another man. If such a man grows a big head, how many of you are here? We have the videos. We are here when a servant of God was vomiting here and his wife. Try to put together those two pictures. They don't look the same. I told him, come. I gave him a ticket. I said, that was his first flight ever. I said, this is air ticket. Go home and see your father. Look at this. Then Jesus returned to the power of returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee, and news of him went out through all the surrounding region. Because when you return in power, there will be news. Where did he return in power from? He was from prayer. Jesus needed time with God to minister to his world. You are too busy with projects, you have no time to pray. Your wife thinks you are having an experience with God. Kumbe is a demon that has come in the form of an eskimo. Your wife thinks it's an encounter. Kumbe ni kashetani kama tembelea mchungaji. The man I prayed for that a demon I got and ngumi. You say pastor. Akila akila la usiku. Shetani na mpiga ngumi and I'm guy. And when he receives that knock, the ministry goes down. So one day he received that punch. It was so strong. <laughs> it was so strong that when he woke up, he landed on the wife, a pastor. He told the wife when I pick even me because the wife said that me ja kupiga. Na wewe pia unakuazika ati mshirika mtoka kanisani. Find God. They came to Elisha. And Elisha told them give me a musician. Bring me a minstrel. There's worship that when you hear the backup there is worship that makes it easy for God to land. There is worship that becomes heaven's airport for where we are going. We are praying Sunday mornings. You haven't seen yet. We will do concerts that will require 14 days of water fast before we stand there in white in a stadium. 
the whole place set not for a preacher to preach for us to create an airport for the presence of God I will not die without revealing God to my generation things must change God is real let's not treat God like Kalongulunga Yawatoto let's not treat God like a begging basket to a generation God will give you money one day. You will respect God. Elisha said, bring me worship. Then the hand of God came upon him. God sends three presidents to one prophet because he has the capacity to attract the hand of God. If three presidents can visit one man in a day and he insults one president and tells one president, go to the prophets of your mother. And he looks at another president and says, because of you, I listen to this idiot. Nevertheless, bring the worship. You can't talk the way you want to talk if you have nothing. No MCA, no MCA will listen to you. Leave alone MCA. I know pastors who are being manipulated by chiefs. Assistant chief. Village elder. He's a village elder and he's also a church elder. Pastor cannot move. Akikohoa. Pastor nasema ya imuishi. Unajua wea sasa kio hapa. Unajua kila kitu. Three presidents visited one man of God in one day. And he told them the reason you came is because I know how to host the hand of God. Now let me show you my God. He said, bring me a minstrel. And the atmosphere changed. And something came on him called the hand of God. May you not just worship. May you not just dance. May you not just sing. May you not just play keyboard. May you not just distribute flyers. May you not just be all out to fill a tent or fill a place of worship. May you know the technicalities on how to deal with the hand of God. I pray for everyone that was waiting for a formula. There is only one formula, the hand of God. Elisha, uh, 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 Jeremiah, Ezekiel said, then the hand of God came on me and took me to a valley that was full of dry bones. And he asked me, son of man, can these bones live? Because the hand of God doesn't come for someone when you're kula kitu kibaya. Mpatie ino. Hama muta. Kuna mtu hapa ni kama anapumua pumua vibaya. Mpatie machungwa na maji ya machungwa atakuwa sawa. The hand of God comes for dry bones. I pray that you be the, the type of a man that when people have been everywhere, they will gather around you because you, you don't have a gift of healing. You can bring the hand of God to men. Said bring a minstrel. And the minstrel began to play. And while he was playing, 2 Kings chapter 3, verse 15, then the hand of God came upon him. Boy, I can only finish this tomorrow. The hand of God came upon him. There are things that need the hand of God. I see people sitting on appointment benches waiting to be prayed for when they need the hand of God. I see people that need to be in prayer seven days and when they leave that place, a mist will fall off their heads. Playing catwalk and doing, you know, hiding in congregation. It's pastor seeing people today. Get out of those things and seek God. When you get to a place where you have a face-to-face -face encounter with the hand of God, there are things that will happen. Someone raise your hands and say, Lord, let your hand rest upon my life. I didn't hear you. I say it again, Lord. Let your hand rest on my life. I had an elderly man of God saying, our wives dressed and we had no office we are reporting to. We were reporting to mountains and caves. Our children went to the best schools. We were reporting to mountains and caves. We have built homes and done things. We yet we reported on mountains and caves. He was speaking to a pastor's conference. He said, all you young pastors, bila mungu, nyinyi mtakula mama zenu. Wachungaji wakanza kulia. In this generation, nobody can give you one million if you don't have God. Billionaires can listen to you and give you a pen as a gift. If you don't know God. He 
It's not about who you know. When you know God, it is God who introduces, it is God that breaks the defense of men and causes your line to have traffic when it comes to help. Listen. People have come to me and said, man of God, there must be money on radio. I said, no problem. I'll pay for you three programs. He came the first program. The, sec the third one, he disappeared. I said, brother, why did you... He said, hey, pastor, people are wicked. Mimi ni matusi pekende, ni mepeata hakuna kitu. Ni kamuambia, but you told me that you get... You, I, I see you on radio, there must be money. To be there 11 years, if God didn't call you to it, leave it. You are dealing with the most wicked devils that can take away your soul. Don't think television is for marketing and advertising yourself as a pastor. Carry something. The late Archbishop Idahosa had a problem one time with the police. And he was seated watching news in his house. And a lady was in the studio. The bishop is in his house. And the lady was about to read news that the controversial archbishop, Benso Andrew, he didn't get to Idahosa. The late archbishop stretched his hand from his living room towards the TV and the station blacked out all over the country. The lady fell from the news desk and died. The news was finished by the next reader. The next reader saw what happened, did not touch the story. Jumped over the story. If you don't have God, Satan will humiliate you and you call it humility. These are the things that make me pray. These are the things that make me sleep in the presence of God. Lord, May I not do this as a beggar? May I not do this as a man that men ought... Yeah, ah, no, no, no! The hand of God came upon him. I pick it up from today, from tomorrow. Listen. They want to recover what they lost. They needed the hand of God. Something was lost that they needed. They needed the hand of God to recover it. I pray the grace to create an atmosphere for God to rest upon your life. I pray for the grace to cultivate the presence of God to come upon your life. I pray for the grace to go after God. I pray that when we begin to pray at 4 a.m. tomorrow, you will have arrived by 3 a.m. in the presence of God. Ladies and gentlemen, no wonder William McDowell, Nathaniel Bassey, together with this guy, Travis, they sang nothing else but your presence, Lord. That's what I want. If you find God, men will find you. If the hand of God is loose over your life, there's no thickness of God over your life. The presence of God over your life is watery. You will cook miracles. You will plan prophecies. What God can do easily, you will manipulate people so that it looks like God did it. You'll become a con man and a crook and your days are numbered. We are in a generation that wants to see the hand of God. They came to this man and he hosted the presence of God and the hand of God came on him. Men are still trying to find men that carry the presence of God on their lives. Bow down your head. Father, tonight, we give you praise. Grant us an opening into that place of intimacy. Grant us an opening into that place of grace. Grant us an opening to love you like we've never loved you before. 
to go after you like we've never gone after you before. Grant us that open place, that solitary place, that place of encounter in Jesus' name. And somebody say it, amen. Now may the grace, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. See you at 4 a.m. in the prayer experience. We have hours of prayer ahead of us. You're not going to work. You're able to turn up, turn up, and let's pray. Let's seek God. Let's go after God. Something is in store for you. Men are trying to find you, but you need to find God. Shalom, our online viewers. God bless you, and see you tomorrow. Put your hands together and appreciate the Lord. Appreciate Jesus.